Alrighty, in this video we're going to go ahead and put together some insta-kill buzz saws. So really, these are just going to be buzz saws that um, r rise out of the ground and then go back into the ground and will automatically kill a player if he hits them. Now fortunately, we pretty much have all the code for this written, so what I effectively want to do is I want create a prefab that contains all the necessary components in order to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and start by um, uh, by coming up here saying create, or sorry, coming up to game object and saying create empty, and let's call this an insta kill buzz saw, and I'm going to place this at zero zero zero. Then inside of the insta kill buzz saw, I'm going to create an empty game object and parent it, and I'm going to call it the path, and I'm going to place the path at zero zero zero. For the path, I'm going to add a new path definition script. Then I'm going to create a new game object and I'm going to parent it to the insta-kill buzzsaw. And I'm going to call it start. Now for start, I'm going to place it at 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to click here on this little, um, this little doohickey right here um, to create a, uh, a nice little um, uh, icon for our start for our path so that's easy to change and click on. Then I'm going to create another game object, empty game object, and I'm going to create and I'm going to call it end. I'm going to give it the same treatment. I'm going to place it at zero, uh, let's let's place it at zero five zero. And let's go ahead and make sure that it's visible. So start and end are now visible. Now let's add start and end to our path. So I'm going to put start in the points, and I'm going to put end in the points. And now you see we get a nice line between start and end. Now let's go ahead and construct our actual buzzsaw. So I'm going to scroll all the way down in my project window to texture atlas main, and I'm going to grab our blue saw, and I'm going to place it at 0, 0, 0. Then I'm going to add a component on it called follow path. The follow path component, I'm going to, well first of all, I'm going to child my blue saw to my insta-kill buzz saw. Then I'm going to take the path and click and drag it onto path. Set the speed to, let's say, 6, and let's keep it at a move towards as opposed to a lerp. Of course you can change that parameter if you wish. Now that we have that all done, I need to add a box collider to my buzz saw. Or sorry, not a box collider, but a box collider 2D. Make sure it's set to trigger. Actually, uh, let's not do a box collider. Let's do a circle collider. And let's make sure that it's set to trigger. Let's give this a rigid body 2D and make it kinematic. And then finally, let's add a final component called insta-kill, which is going to be our insta-kill script that we used on our punji sticks. So that pretty much puts together all the stuff that we'll need for our buzzsaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a prefab. I'm going to come up here to prefabs, and then I'm going to click and drag insta-kill buzzsaw and make it into a prefab. And then let's go ahead and place it some places. I'm going to place one right here, and I'm going to modify the end path to be down here. Then I'm going to scroll over here, and I'm going to click and drag another one right here. So now you guys get to see the power of prefabs and that I'm able to construct these complex component hierarchies with a prefab and I'm able to basically just um, uh, instantiate it wherever I want. Now let's scroll over here and let's create a final buzzsaw right there. Okay. The last thing I want to do is I want to set my layer ordering so that the saws appear behind the level. If we come up here to layers and we hit edit layers and we look at our sorting layers, we really want our buzz saws to appear behind the foreground but ahead of the tree line. So what I want to do is I want to add a new layer called behind foreground and I want to drag that layer up to be above the tree line but behind the foreground. 
Now that I've done that, I want to come here to my buzz saws, click on them. I want to select the actual buzz saw out of it, the one that has the sprite render are on it, and set the sorting layer to behind foreground. Then I want to come up here and hit apply. Notice how all of our buzz saws now disappear behind the foreground because that property has been applied to all of our um, prefabs. Now let's go ahead and hit play and test these guys. Oh, this game is getting kind of hard. And you see they do indeed kill us. They do indeed go up and down. Um, following their path, and this guy just killed us again. Again, you have to time it like just right. Oh, wow. Maybe we can make them slower um, or modify their start and end. Maybe make their start a little bit further down. Or sorry, we want to click on the start, not the whole object, just the start. So we can select start and move the start down just a little bit. Uh, that might make it a little bit easier to jump on it, because now it'll be hidden for a longer period of time. Alrighty. So that's really all I wanted to do in this video, is just show you guys how we can take all the objects that we've put together thus far and make some interesting uh, gameplay out of it. So I think that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to do, and we'll see you guys in the next video.